Good morning and welcome to Shattering Myths. I am Yada. Each weekday here on GCN, we strive to expose the destructive myths associated with religion and politics, patriotism in the media, and with military and economic schemes. Instead of merely presenting the news, our mission here is to understand what is actually occurring behind these headlines while predicting how the events they report will shape our world. Then during our second hour, we will engage God on his terms through evidence and reason, since his is the lone reliable voice in an exceedingly troubled world. Our phone number for those who would like to participate in this discussion is toll-free, 877-300-7645. Since uh, they uh, sponsored the SRN news segment again, I will uh, present the contrarian view. Um, ChristianMingle.com cannot find God's match for you. If God wanted to find a match for all of the little Christians in the world, he would do so personally. He would intervene in free will and just put them together. God does not use private businesses to accomplish his goals. I know that many of you think that God is a football fan and that it is a shame that God's quarterback has been shelved. But uh, no, God does not involve himself in the petty affairs of humans. To promote a business as if they are doing God's work and that God can only prevail through them is absolutely repulsive. These guys really sicken me. That has got to be amongst the most immoral companies on earth. But it's amazing that the Christians are ever flocking to them. Tells you that Christians aren't able to think very well either. I had an interesting experience. For those who listen to um, the uh, Sabbat show that we do every uh, Friday evening on uh, Blog Talk Radio, uh, where we devote an hour and a half to studying uh, Yahweh's Torah, uh, typically, but sometimes his prophets and psalms. Uh, towards the end of the program, the last three minutes of the program, I was watching someone walk up my driveway, kind of like you would see if they were Mormons, but typically with Mormons, they always go out with reinforcements and they wear the little black suits. So I'd say, yeah, probably not Mormons, no white shirts, no black suit. And uh, and then I thought, I oh, probably uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, because I had a Jehovah's Witness that show up uh, at uh, I have a gate at the bottom of our property, has a little intercom, and uh, and they pushed the intercom and, and uh, wanted to uh, share the Bible with me. And uh, so I said, uh, you know, let's uh, let's chat a little bit before you uh, you come up. And and uh, after about uh, three minutes, she said, you know, I, I just don't think that I'm prepared to have a discussion with you. And so I figured maybe this was the uh, the senior uh, Jehovah's uh, Witness. Uh, uh, Jovite that was going to uh, see if they could um, uh, prevail. But uh, no, no, no. Uh, the things that I have been saying about socialist secular humanism appear to be true. They now have evangelists. The evangelist that was walking up my uh, driveway carrying his nifty little uh, briefcase uh, dressed all um, cutesy was uh, an evangelist for the Environment California Research and Policy Center. Uh, the uh, evangelist left a flyer on my front porch. It looked like when I saw the flyer in the uh, the door, because the show didn't end in time for me to encounter the uh, the evangelist, uh, it looked exactly like the kinds of things you'd see from Bill Bright's Campus Crusade, uh, um, Four Spiritual Laws, you know, Christian uh, literature. Um, you know, read this little uh, uh, tract and, and you can be saved. You know, I don't know why God even bothered uh, to uh, visit us. Uh, why he bothered with the Torah? I mean, why he bothered saving his children from Israel, from uh, Egypt? Why? Why bother with any of that stuff? Because Bill Bright uh, was able to condense it all into uh, four spiritual laws. Uh, but uh, that's what it looked like. And so I read the this, and I want to just share with you uh, some of uh, of how the environmental evangelists are um, are now trying to gain uh, members. It. Uh, said that the 2006 heat wave, that those fires cut 600 lives short. So their mission is 
also about salvation. They want to prevent lives being cut short. Now, mind you, they had to go back seven years to uh, to have a, a a situation that would fit their uh, agenda. And it was the heat wave of 2006, they said, that led to the fires that cut short as many as 600 lives. So it was about salvation. They also had a fire and brimstone message. They say that fire projections uh, say that it could get worse. There is also moral corruption, a, a pornography plank, if you will. They said that we uh, should expect more smog pollution. Now, I want to tell you there's one thing, having spent considerable time in California growing up uh, and uh, visiting uh, Southern California from time to time, the one thing that is uh, is decidedly better is smog. Uh, a number of just practical things um, solved the smog problem, but there were, uh, when I went to the University of Spoiled Children, USC, in downtown Los Angeles, my experience was that you could see the San Gabriel Mountains that surround uh, the Los Angeles Basin about one day and four or five. Uh, the rest of the time, it was way too smoggy, and the smog would burn your eyes, burn your, your uh, lungs. I mean, it was horrible. And and now uh, when you drive into downtown Los Angeles, what you notice is that it is a very rare day where the mountains aren't visible, and when they're not visible, it's it's uh, clouds, not smog. And so eh, that's just not true. They're uh, they're warning about something here that uh, is getting much better. Of course, there must be a foe uh, for uh, religion to prevail. The foe is uh, cars burning fossil fuels, according to the flyer. And uh, what are the cars and the burning the fossil fuels doing? Well, they're killing our children. Salvation? Oh, yes, there is a salvation plank. It's renewable energy. Of course, they're purely hypocritical in this regard because the environmentalists are opposed to every renewable energy product save none. You want geothermal? Nope, they're opposed to that because of earthquakes. You want wind? Nope, they're opposed to that because they're unsightly and they kill birds. You uh, you want uh, um, solar? Nope, they're opposed to that because it uh, it interferes with the desert tortoise and their migration uh, patterns. Everything that you mentioned that is renewable energy, they're opposed to but hypocrisy runs supreme in religion. The brochure ends with, we need to do more to tackle global warming. As with all religions, it is uh, based on lies. Now that we have precise measuring in, uh, instruments in some 3,000 places around the world, all coordinated via, via satellite reporting, and we can actually and accurately monitor temperature trends on the globe as a whole and have been able to do so for the past 15 years. The evidence says that over the same past 15 years, when we've finally been able to deploy a, a thousands uh, of monitoring stations, all with precise instruments, that there is no global warming, not even a one one hundredth of one degree. Now, the environmentalists will say, well, if you go the 15 years prior to that time, there was a modest rise, yes, but if you go uh, 30 years before that, and yet that's your starting date, then there is no change at all. Global warming is a myth. Now, that does not mean that climate change is a myth, but those who are still promoting global warming are doing so by promoting lies. And it's a uh, double-pronged lie. It's not only that now that we finally have instruments that are capable of actually measuring temperature variations around the globe simultaneously, that for the last 15 years they have not detected any change in global temperature. But it's also a, uh, like all religions, liar scheming to deceive for their own personal enrichment and empowerment. Prior to this time, there is overwhelming evidence that the illusion of global warming was conceived, contrived by this group. And so you have all of the trimmings of religion here, including the flyers and now evangelists. Turning to other items in the news, a uh, 
office of the Red Cross was attacked in, in an eastern Afghan city of Jalalabad. The suicide bomber targeted the office and uh, uh, blew himself up. It is amazing that you can be in a culture that is so repulsive that the religious leaders in that culture would say, see those people over there that are donating their lives, dedicating their lives, donating their time to provide free health care for us, to bandage those that we blow up, to heal those that we make sick. And I think that the best way that we can demonstrate how grateful we are for their devotion to us is to go see if we can kill them. Speaking of warped, we mentioned this briefly in our Friday program, but the 21-year-old, they call him a suspect. He's admitted to the crime. Once you've admitted to the crime, it's hard to evaluate one as a suspect or speak of them as a suspect. But nonetheless, that's how far we have fallen in terms of our ability to reason. Well, the 21-year-old who was arrested earlier over the stabbing of a French soldier, the French soldier didn't get quite as much attention as did the British soldier because the attack of the British soldier was, of course, all videotaped. But the French soldier was uh, was stabbed within the, the same week, uh, and it appeared as if it was a copycat kind of a stabbing, uh, and indeed it was. The man named only as Alexandre was a convert to Islam who had wanted to attack a representative of the state. And so it was his Islam that made him do it. The suspect stabbed the soldier with a fairly intent um, design to kill, according to the authorities, and he had probably, not necessarily, probably acted based upon his religious ideology, French authorities told reporters. The spokesman said that he had been seen on surveillance footage saying a Muslim prayer moments before the attack. Yes, indeed. Islam was the motivation. He was praying to his God for the ability to kill an innocent individual, someone he did not know. In service to his God, he was going to kill. Do you think there's a correlation between Islam and killing? Was he indeed motivated by his religious ideology? Did Islam corrupt him, or did he corrupt Islam? We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back to Shattering Mists. Just as it is with the individual acts of Islamic terrorism, uh, Scott, by the way, answered the uh, the question as to whether or not uh, Islam had corrupted the Frenchman 18 years ago when he converted to Islam or whether the Frenchman 18 years ago decided that he would corrupt um, uh, the religion of Islam. So there's no reason to call in. The, the grand prize has been awarded to Scott for correctly answering the question. But just as uh, one individual stabbing or killing, the one in Great Britain or in France, demonstrates the caustic nature of the religion, so do global trends. Ghana's president, John um, uh, Mahama, has warned that Islamist militancy poses a threat that could destabilize the entire region of northwest Africa. Well, it's already taken control of and destabilized uh, three countries uh, in terms of their political change, Egypt, um, Libya, and Tunisia, all turning to fundamentalist Islamic governments. Of course, it took over uh, Mali. But what uh, has transpired, Senator John McCain is, uh, has been a, uh, uh, should be embarrassed about, but uh, no, he's uh, pleading to now start uh, turning American weapons on uh, Syria, is that when we invaded uh, the airspace of Libya and started providing weapons to the Mujahideen that would oust Muammar Gaddafi, in America primarily at the urging of John McCain, what we did is we created a terrorist free zone in Libya 
and that is where the fundamentalist Muslims now are arming themselves, typically with American weapons, and that is where they are striking the rest of the region. Mr. Mahama told the BBC that uh, although Ghana had not yet been directly affected, no country was safe if the insurgency was allowed to take hold. Ghana's leader said the incidents have showed that the whole region has become an attractive foothold for insurgents. If we do not, if we allow that foothold to consolidate, then it would infect the stability of the entire continent of Africa. And it is true. Right now, uh, Africa is blowing apart at the seams. You've got uh, Boko Haram uh, tearing uh, Nigeria to the point where it is uh, soon going to just declare all-out civil war. You've got the French having invaded Mali, and all they did is they dispersed the fundamentalist Muslims out of uh, Mali into the surrounding nations, primarily into Libya where they have consolidated, and they will strike more um, with more men and with better munitions than they had previously. The French have already realized there is no winning, that uh, their invasion of Mali was like putting your finger in a glass of water and then pulling it back out. If you look at Libya, it is now ground central for Islamic terrorism in Africa. You look at Egypt, and now they have allowed the Sinai to become the terrorist free zone. It is erupting all around us. Uh, there is such vengeance and, and such rage now in Nigeria that it is on the cusp of a civil war. These are the last days where Islam will continue to rise in anger and rage and authoritarian dictatorships ultimately taking control of huge swaths of Africa and the Middle East and then turning all of their anger to Israel starting World War III. In a small incident, a Chicago man was sentenced on Thursday of last week to 23 years in prison for attempting to set off what he thought was a bomb on a crowded street near Wrigley Field. He was attempting to do what happened in Boston. Sami Samir Hussain, 25, was arrested shortly after placing the backpack in a trash container in a crowded area, an area that was frequented by restaurant patrons and uh, bar hoppers following a concert at Wrigley Field. Hussein thought that the bag contained a bomb, but it was an inert device given to him by men he didn't know were uncover uh, FBI agents. Personally, I think that this whole FBI sting thing is a, uh, it's a farce. It, uh, when you say, go to someone who you know is uh, is motivated by Islam, and you say, hey, I'll work with you so you can go kill people, and then you provide the means to do so, the encouragement to do so, and then you arrest them and send them to jail for 23 years for doing what you were encouraging. Something doesn't strike me as being right about that. Hussein was a Lebanese citizen living legally in the United States. He pleaded guilty to the uh, charges of trying to set off the explosives, and he said he wanted to kill Americans. Shattering miss. Speak of, uh, of uh, shattering, Russia affirmed last week that it's going to go ahead with the deliveries of S-300 anti-aircraft missiles to Syria. It says that the arms will uh, help deter foreign intervention. Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Rebakov said that the missiles were a stabilizing factor that could dissuade some hotheads from entering the conflict. Now, I'm not a fan of, uh, of Putin, who has become a fascist dictator over Russia. Um, I think he is probably as rotten as any leader in the world.
But there is a quality about Putin that I do find uh, uh, interesting, uh, if not even uh, positive. And that is, Putin will on occasion, because he is so confident in his control of Russia, tell the unvarnished truth. It is actually a stabilizing factor for Russia to provide anti-aircraft missiles to Syria to keep some hotheads from entering the conflict. I heard uh, John, I just love a war, McCain, on the news uh, over the weekend uh, explaining how America needs to engage its military capability to um, cause the Syrian regime to be incapable of defending itself thereby, of course, uh, siding with, tangibly, using our weapons, the jihadists who are trying to overthrow the, sect, the secular government. Now, if that happens, the situation in Syria will be infinitely worse, not only for Israel, but also for, for the citizens of Syria, in addition to the United States. It is as stupid as the invasion of Iraq, as stupid as the invasion of Afghanistan, as stupid as the support for the Mujahideen takeover of Libya, as foolish as our support for the Muslim Brotherhood and their takeover of Egypt. Of course, John, I love a war, was in favor of all of those things, and he doesn't seem smart enough to make the distinction between, you know, I probably ought to just keep my mouth shut because everything I have been for has become a disaster. But evidently you don't get much of an education, at least in the exercise of good judgment at the U.S. Naval Academy. The delivery of the missiles will in fact keep some hotheads from entering the conflict. And that's a good thing. There is no winning here. There is no lesser of two evils. The rebels are worse than the current government, and that's, that's a, uh, an unbelievable thought. As bad as the Assad regime is, these rebels are far worse. They will be far more disastrous for America, for Israel, and for Syria. And to aid and abet them would be stupid. Mind you, the, the fact that we would be aiding and abetting our own suicide. The only issue with the missiles is that they would make it more difficult for Israel to defend itself. And so for that reason, I am opposed to them. But to keep America at bay, they would be worthwhile. This journalist said that the S-300 is a highly capable surface-to-air missile system that, as well as targeting aircraft, has the capability to engage ballistic missiles. It is broadly comparable to the U.S. Patriot system. That's not true. Deployed by NATO to guard Turkish airspace against an attack. Yes, here is America guarding Turkey, while Turkey is literally blowing up from the inside with Freedom fighters, people who genuinely don't want an Islamic government, people who really want a democracy, people want, who want an end to the authoritative and uh, autocratic rule of the Grand Sultan of uh, Turkey, Erdogan. And it's being, their protest is being put down with an iron fist by the dictator. And yet the United States is providing the means to protect him. We're on the wrong side all the time. We'll turn to that story in a moment, but first, there's another gift being provided to the world outside uh, or from Saudi Arabia. It is uh, the uh, coronavirus. Uh, other patients have now died in France. You might say, why in France? Because France is, is ground zero for the Islamic invasion of Europe. The virus, which is uh, similar to uh, those which cause SARS, SARS is related, by the way, to the common cold virus, emerged late last year. Out of 44 confirmed cases around the world, 23 people have now died. Almost all of them have uh, 
travel connections to the Middle East, primarily to Saudi Arabia. When you have a virus that kills more than half of those that it infects, then you are dealing with something that would ravage humankind if it isn't controlled. The virus causes pneumonias and pneumonia and sometimes uh, organ failure. Cases have been reported in Jordan, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and United Arab Emirates, and as well as Tunisia, as well as in countries with, with travel from those places like France, Germany, and the UK. Half of the 44 reported cases have come from Saudi Arabia. Just as Islam came from Saudi Arabia, so too is this deadly virus. In a statement earlier in, the, uh, in May, the World Health Organization said, quote, the greatest global concern, however, is about the potential for this new virus to spread. This is partly because the virus has already caused severe disease in multiple countries, although in small numbers, but it has persisted in the Middle East since 2012. Of most concern, however, is the fact that the different clusters seen in multiple countries increasingly support the hypothesis that when there is close uh, contact, this novel coronavirus can transmit from person to person. Now, we don't know whether this is the virus that is spoken of in terms of the deadly pandemics that will plague our world in the years prior to Yausha's return. But we know one of these will. And with the kind of travel that is possible today and the tolerance that the world has for allowing the virus of religion to permeate countries, we're going to see death on a mag just on an enormous scale that is going to ravage the world. It would be almost poetic, although in a very sinister and dark way, to have this virus come from the same place that the most demonic of religions has emerged, because there is a direct correlation between religion and deadly viruses, pandemics that infect and kill so many viruses that are passed from human contact from person to person and this is one that we need to keep an eye on because it is deadly and it seems to be unstoppable there's also a virus of the mind after taking up Palestine quote unquote as a member the United Nations RWA chief posse uh, our chief posed, I should say, uh, the headline here was written by someone who forgot the, uh, the D on posed, with a map where Israel is deleted. The United Nations Relief and Works Agency, that's UNRWA, launched a German-funded project in southern Lebanon where the area's di director of, uh, of UNRWA affairs, Anne Dismore, posed with a map devoid of any trace of the state of Israel. The map instead presenting what was Israel, what is Israel, as Palestine. Not to the West Bank and Gaza, all of Israel. The Palestinian Media Watch captured the UN representatives' actions and noted that above the map is the Palestinian flag and the inscription, Arab Palestine. The text at the bottom of the map also reads, Just Palestine. Egypt, Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon are all identified on the map. By name, only Israel is erased from the UN map. What's more, the Jewish state's towns in the Negev Desert, along with Beersheba, Hebron, Bethlehem, Jerusalem, Jaffa, Haifa, Acre, and Tiberias, and the Dead Sea, are all associated with this new country called Palestine on the map. German-funded project, socialist secular humanists in league with Islam, working through the United Nations. It's two. 
is a harbinger of what we're going to see as we move towards the tribulation. The military chief of the main umbrella group of Syrian rebels, the Free Syrian Army, this is the, uh, the name that is given to the West to make it look like it's appropriate to send weapons to the, oh boy, what a democratic name, Free Syrian Army. Boy, that, that means it's command and control, they've got uh, their uh, noble ideas or freedom. Let's send our weapons to them. Of course, uh, they don't represent anything or anyone. That's just a ruse to justify American intervention. But nonetheless, they have accused Hezbollah of invading Syria in a BBC interview. General Salim Indris said that more than 7,000 fighters of the Lebanese Shia movement were taking part in attacks in the rebel town of Qusair. Now, mind you, Hezbollah is not a Lebanese organization. It's an Iranian organization. The, the Hezbollah fighters have more right to engage in the conflict in Syria than do the vast majority of the jihadists, the Sunni jihadists, who have taken up the great jihad against Shia Islam from countries around the world. General Indris made an emotional appeal to Western powers on the BBC World Service's NewsHour program saying, We're dying! Please come help us! He made an urgent appeal for more weapons to defend our citizens. Yes, indeed. Nothing says peace. Nothing says that the dying will stop than more weapons, particularly more weapons to Islamic terrorists. We'll return to Shattering Mists in a moment. Welcome back to Shattering Mists. The uh, general here that uh, is begging for more weapons uh, because they're killing us in, uh, in his words, although he is, of course, killing them as well said that more than 50,000 residents were trapped in the uh, the town and that a massacre would occur if it fell. Now, you know, it's interesting. You uh, you have this uh, buffoon uh, Muslim in uh, London that uh, says that he's justified in killing the uh, the member of the British uh, military because uh, Brits are overseas killing Muslims. And here, here is a situation where Muslims are killing Muslims, and there may be 50,000 Muslims killed by Muslims. You know, in the entire history of the British Empire, it would be unlikely that Britain has killed as many Muslims as have died the last year at the hands of Muslims just in Syria. And certainly if you were to take the last decade of uh, Britain's involvement in Afghanistan and in Iraq, I would be surprised if they killed a thousand Muslims. And yet, well over a hundred thousand Muslims have been killed by Muslims in Syria alone. Muslims killed more than a thousand Muslims in Iraq just in this last month. If a Muslim wants to go all uh, Rambo on those who kill Muslims, he really needs to go off and kill Muslims. Asked about the presence of jihadist factions in the Syrian opposition, General Indris said that they formed not more than 5 to 8 percent of the fighters in Syria and that they had received excessive media coverage. Of course, that is absolutely untrue. And even, it isn't even in the realm of reason. It isn't even a good lie. But what do Muslims do as well as they kill? Lie. Speaking of Muslims killing, the United Nations has said that more than a thousand people were killed by Muslim on Muslim violence in Iraq in the month of May alone. The highest monthly death toll in many years. The violence makes it the deadliest month since the wide sectarian violence that occurred in 2006 and 2007 following the U.S. invasion. The rising concern is that the country is returning to civil war. 
The vast majority of the casualties were, of course, civilians, and Baghdad was the worst hit area of the country. Martin Kubler, the UN envoy envoy to Iraq, said that it is a sad record and urged politicians to act to stop the bloodshed. Well, politicians acted, which is what created the bloodshed. There was no presence of any kind of al-Qaeda in Iraq prior to the U.S. invasion. Al-Qaeda and Iraq were enemies. There were no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq prior to the U.S. invasion, meaning that George Bush lied on both accounts. But as a result of his invasion, a million people have died. The U.S. has squandered $6 trillion bankrupting the nation. And yet, uh, in our wake, we, uh, we left, we replaced a sectarian government with one that is purely Islamic, Shia-dominated, controlled by Tehran. It is a sad record, and we created the mess. Figures released over the weekend showed that 1,045 civilians were killed in May, far higher than the 712 who died in April. April itself was the worst recorded month since June of 2008. On Thursday, Mr. Kobler warned that systematic violence is ready to explode at any moment if all Iraqi leaders do not engage immediately to pull the country out of this mayhem. They're never going to engage. Sunnis hate Shia. It has been the case for many, many, many years, all the way back to Muhammad's death when the Sunni and Shia movements grew out of a fight for power in Muhammad's wake. They're killing each other and will continue to kill each other. Yahweh said of them, their brother's hand will be raised against their brother and their brother's hand against him and they will live in hostility with the whole world. The BBC's Rami Rahumin in Baghdad says that the violence has been linked to a standoff between the Sunni minority against the Shia-dominated order installed following the U.S.-led invasion uh, 10 years ago. Yes, indeed, the BBC's broadcaster is uh, recognized that the problem here is that the United States replaced a sectarian government with a Shia-dominated order. He didn't say that it's loyal to Tehran, but that should be obvious. And it was a direct result of the U.S. invasion 10 years ago. And that that is what has caused the Civil War. The U.S. caused it. We'll return to Shattering Myths after the commercial break. 